So Benno Schmidt was the guy who was designated as the czar of cancer by Nixon. He was Nixon's old friend. And Benno Schmidt was a very wise man. He came from the money folks in New York. But uh, his wisdom went well beyond money. And Benno Schmidt said on the day that Nixon signed the, uh, the bill, he said, I think it would be a great mistake to build up false hopes, to talk about crash programs, or to put success in any time frame. So if you go back and actually read it, the powers that be knew that this was a venture into the unknown and that before we learned a whole lot, and we are still in that position, the statistics weren't going to change. So now back to MIT. Luria, ever aware of political events, watched the legislation that set the war in motion and realized that there was money now to build a cancer center. The cancer centers were generally envisaged as comprehensive centers, somebody said this this morning, that would do research but also deliver patient care. And most of us would have said in this position that really only a medical school would ever fit this pattern. But Salva noted that the legislation provided for specialized centers that were less than comprehensive. And he looked around MIT and imagined that we could make a case for building a basic cancer center here. We really had little to build on except our reputation. We had a reputation as a center for innovation, but we didn't have much cancer research. In fact, as I remember, I was the only person who was overtly doing cancer research, and I was mainly doing biochemistry. I had Bob Weinberg as a postdoc beginning to do some cancer biology, but I think that he joined me after the Cancer Center grant was approved. Yeah. So there really was no one. So let me stop for a moment and ask why Luria even thought about a cancer center. He was a microbiologist. He knew very little about cancer. But he was proposing to be director of this new enterprise and to build a building that would house it. Salva was the incarnation of selfless institutional vision. He envisioned the cancer center as the next step in developing molecular biology at MIT. He knew from the time he came to MIT in 1958, that the focus on phage and bacterial biology that had characterized molecular biology to that time was going to be superseded by a concern with the molecular biology of higher cells. He encouraged the hiring of Jim Darnell, who only stayed here a short while, Sheldon Penman, me, and others at MIT during the 1960s because he saw us as leading that thrust. He gave us support in every way, even lending me part of his laboratory space so that I could move into cancer cell biology. What currency is dearer to the heart of a scientist than his lab space? But Salva was willing to even give that up in the interests of building the institution. So what Salva had was the vision thing, but he had it with a sight into the distance of laser sharpness and with complete historical vindication. The Cancer Center as it existed even now 15 years ago was the exact institution that Luria had imagined some about 25 years earlier. It had strong virology, strong cell and developmental biology, strong immunology, and those were the elements that we described in the first grant request that went to the National Cancer Institute. I put the time as 15 years ago, because I left MIT about then for the last time, and I lost track of the changes that have occurred. I know that with a move to the new building to the, and, and the new name, the center carries a new phase of development that will forward Luria's trajectory into the new world that I see coming of synthetic biology. But I've gotten way ahead of the story. What Luria did when he first saw the opportunity was to come to me and ask if I was up for the idea. This was late in 1970, or it must have been early 71, uh, when the first glimmers of this thing became evident. 
And I was enjoying then the opportunities that had been opened by the work uh, on reverse transcriptase. But I saw two limitations coming up in the future. One was that there were members of the biology department who were very uncomfortable with this work. Even the work we were doing on polio virus at the time made them uncomfortable. And I was sure that when we started really working with tumor viruses, uh, there was going to be trouble. They were afraid of contagion. They were afraid for the young students who populated the halls. Uh, they were simply afraid that something untoward might happen, and they let me know it. They had grown up in the world where biophysics, biochemistry, and microbiology reigned. These were generally undangerous activities, at least as practiced at MIT. Second, I wanted to expand my efforts, particularly into animal models, and I needed space built to a different expectation than the old Magasanic laboratories in which I, in fact, inherited. I enjoyed my collaboration with Harvey Lodish, with whom I shared space, and wanted to encourage more collaboration with new faculty who would have an orientation to the problems of mammalian biology. So I said to Salva, I was ready to help in any way possible to make that vision a reality. Salva then brought the idea to the then president of MIT, Jerry Wiesner. Jerry was also an institution builder. Many of the buildings you see around here today uh, were built by Jerry. And it looked to me that he quite quickly said, yes, go for it. And why not? Salva was projecting a significant expansion of MIT biology virtually totally at government expense. I, knew, I also knew that Jerry was personally very aware of the scientific currents then swirling in biology and wanted MIT to be more involved. So with Jerry's blessing, we quickly laid out our plans, applied to the National Cancer Institute. We were the only institution to propose a specialized center focusing solely on the underlying biology of cancer. We were really asking for a leap of faith in us because we had so little to build on, but our prayers were answered. We could then survey the area for a likely venue for creating our dream, and we found that the pillars were strong in the candy factory on Ames Street <laughs> and considered that fitting it out would be a little awkward, but eminently feasible. And actually, we owe a lot to our architects Goody Clancy, uh, who've done so much else, the, up to the, what number is that, like 68? Right. Um, but this was the first thing they did on the campus. And at that point, Marv Goody was still alive and played a major role in this himself. So it was built and has stayed as functional laboratories for 36 years. Um, maybe gotten a little seedy along the way, but it was sparkling when it opened. So there, the, exactly the kind of work that Luria imagined has been done. There are as many major advances in cancer research that have occurred there as at any institution in the world, as was discussed earlier today, and I think that underst understates the importance. There, MIT was able to be a participant in just the advances in biology that Wiesner wanted to see happen at MIT. I personally feel that my whole career has been a realization of Luria's dreams. It is truly that he is my father and I a dutiful son. I have tried to carry on his legacy, to look forward, not back, to find the best of the best and encourage them to realize their personal talents provide facilities that encourage young scientists to move in new directions, creating the future as they go. I moved my efforts to other venues and now the other coast, partly because I knew that there were other disciples of Luria, notably Phil Sharp, Richard Hines, and now Tyler Jacks, who were watching over this piece of his legacy so effectively. Let me finish with a little peek into the future, the real future as we all know, is unknowable. We can at best project a little bit of the present out a short distance, but let me give that a try. 
I am worried about the present trajectory of cancer research. It is heavily focused on designing drugs to kill cancer cells, a paradigm that it certainly has proven its value. We hope that a deep knowledge of the biochemistry of cancer cells will uncover pathways containing druggable proteins, an awful word, that can, uh, can be the objects of therapy. But as we develop an appreciation for the varieties of pathways that can lead to inappropriate cell growth, seeing inappropriate cell growth as a symptom of the disease, not as the disease itself. We are asking for more and more drugs, wanting to treat each cancer individually and with multiple agents simultaneously. Meanwhile, the pharmaceutical industry is getting less and less productive. And the drugs that are developed require increasing cost and then must sell at increasingly unrealistic prices. This is not a sustainable model. We need alternative approaches to the problem, and that's why I am so excited by the directions that the Koch Institute is taking. By harnessing the skills of people who have new perspectives to bring to cancer research, the Koch Institute holds out the promise of approaching cancer from new directions and ultimately attacking cancers with new tools. Just as Luria did 40 years ago, one builds for the future by recognizing trends, providing facilities, and then betting heavily on people. This time, a great benefactor has provided the resources to make the new bets possible, and we as a country and a world will owe homage to David Koch's realization that MIT is the place to continue the hard work of fighting against cancer. With a new perspective and new people, we will make the advances we need. We must thank David for recognizing that Luria's vision can only be fully realized if it is renewed and refurbished in the light of new capabilities and perspective. And thank all of you here today for your efforts and for listening so respectfully to my ramblings about the past and the future. Thank you. David Baltimore. <laughs> Having David and Alice with us is something that's extremely special um, because it's just part of history, it's embedded in everything that we do. Um, on behalf of Tyler Jacks, I want to thank all of you for coming here, for being part of this. Tyler said that, you know, uh, put your money where your mouth is, and I'm just going to tell you, I'm, I think, I'm thinking about it. So, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe all of you should. Um, the evening is over, hopefully the bar is still open. Uh, thank you for a wonderful day of science and of uh, reminiscence. Tomorrow we begin at 9 a.m. Um, drive safely if you're driving. Um, have a good time if you're staying here for a while. And thank you very much for this wonderful evening.